Hey, order! Oh, order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! Now, let's pick up on the prospect of airstrikes against so-called Islamic State targets in Syria and talk to the Labour MP, Mike Gapes. Mike Gapes, are you in favour now of British military airstrikes against IS in Syria? I am, uh, but I also think we should be trying to work to stop the Assad regime doing its barrel bombing of civilians in Syria as well. Would you be in favour of those airstrikes without a UN resolution? We don't need a resolution, and in fact, um, interestingly, if the French do invoke NATO's Article 5, they'll be doing the same as uh, NATO uh, invoked Article 5 and offered collective support to the United States after 9-11. Um, in fact, the U.S. didn't actually request that, but NATO has been here before. Right. Uh, and I, I believe that um, we have perfectly legitimate reason. We are fighting against Raqqa, uh, sorry, we're fighting against uh, Daesh, uh, ISIL in Iraq. And um, I think it's no military logic whatsoever to ha have British forces uh, involved in the recapture of Mount Sinjar last week, um, which is just across the border from Syria and not be prepared to go over to the headquarters of the organisation. It's like okay. in World, World War II, uh, attacking Hamburg, but not Berlin. Right. Well, Jeremy Corbyn, Labour leader, won't support airstrikes without a UN resolution, which looks highly unlikely because of the uh, Russian veto. Uh, so will you still vote with the government, even if the Labour leader mm. doesn't? Oh, yes, I will vote according to my conscience and my beliefs. And I don't think Jeremy's in any position, given his record of voting against the Labour whip uh, under Neil Kinnock, Tony Blair, Gordon Brown, John Smith, Ed Miliband, uh, Margaret Beckett, Harriet Harman. I don't think he's in any position to try to prevent Labour MPs from voting what we believe is right. Right, so you'll do that even if there isn't a free vote. You're a bell. Absolutely. How many... I will do what is right for my country. Right. And how many of your Labour colleagues are willing to vote with you on this and vote I, with the government? I, I, I'm not organising anything. I don't know. I have no idea. I've had a lot of conversations with people who agree with me, but I have no idea. We've got to also see the terms of any motion that David Cameron puts down. Right. It's impossible at this stage to, to make any kind of prediction because we don't know what the government are actually going to propose. Right, but you're going to vote with your conscience, as you say, and you will rebel if that is the line taken by Labour. Um, just referring back to the former Mayor of London, Ken Livingstone, who called uh, your parliamentary colleague Kevin Jones depressed uh, because he criticised or questioned Ken Livingstone's appointment as co-convener of this defence review and advised that he saw a psychiatrist. Now, he's since apologised but maintains he didn't start that row. Should he be fired? I don't think that uh, the remarks of Ken Livingstone are uh, in any way uh, acceptable. They are beneath contempt. And I, th I also think his appointment to this post um, is a bit extraordinary, given that last week he was calling for the deselection of members of the Parliamentary Labour Party. This is, of course, a man who himself stood against the Labour Party uh, in an election. And I, I actually think um, Ken Livingstone would be best to just gracefully withdraw, because I don't see he's got anything constructive to say at this time. Right, and if he doesn't withdraw, should he be fired? Well, that's not a matter for me, that's a matter for whoever appointed him. Right, Mike Gapes, thank you very much. And we're joined now by the Shadow International Development Secretary, Diane Abbott. Should Ken Livingstone just withdraw? No. Ken, Kevin Jones, who he talked about his mental health, Kevin and I disagree on most things, but actually I consider him a friend. Ken was quite wrong to say the things he did about mental health um, conditions. I'm very glad he's withdrawn what he said. But you have to remember, three times, three years running, Ken has come top of the poll for constituency representatives of the NEC. And you need somebody co-convening this um, review who reflects the views of ordinary members. Right. And as you say, he's got a different view to Maria Eagle, who is yeah. the Shadow Defence Secretary. But, you know, when Ken Livingstone was asked to apologise, he wouldn't, uh, first of all, yesterday. In fact, it took many hours before he did say sorry, but he didn't say sorry very graciously. Um, he said, if anyone's offended, I'm very sorry about that. But the reality is he, Kevin Jones, started this row. I mean, it's playground politics. All I can tell you is that as soon as Jeremy spoke to him, and Jeremy was not able to speak to him until after Prime Minister's questions, Ken Livingstone agreed to withdraw his remarks. And it was the right 
thing to do. Right. He said, if anyone's upset again, I'm sorry about that, but I didn't start this row. I woke up this morning to find a Labour MP denouncing me in this role. You heard Mike Gapes and many other parliamentary colleagues saying it's unacceptable, it's beneath contempt, to use Mike Gapes' words. Is that the right person to be leading, uh, co-convening your defence review? Three times top of the poll for the constituency section of the NEC, a long-standing leader of the JLC who was responsible for civil defence in that role. He is the right person. If he hadn't withdrawn his remarks, that would be different, but he's withdrawn his remarks, and I think we need to move on. Right. Ken Livingston's not the only one causing problems, it seems, for the party, or certainly amongst parliamentary um, colleagues of yours. I mean, it's reported today uh, that John McDonnell, the Shadow Chancellor, signed a letter of demands by the social network as part of their socialist campaign for a Labour victory back in April, calling to disband MI5 and special police squads and disarm the police. Would you be worried about that? Do you know, John McDonnell is now saying he didn't sign any such letter, although his name may feature on the website. Judging by some of the things being written about me in recent weeks, it may well not be true. Maybe a misunderstanding, but it may well not well, be let, true. Well, let's just show you the picture, because this is the picture of him holding that letter, a copy of which I have here from the Sun newspaper, the Socialist Campaign for a Labour Victory. It has about 12 lists of demands, and one of them, as I say, is the one calling to disband MI5 and special police squads and disarm the police. Would you be worried if that is the case? Would I be worried if John McDonald thought we should disband yeah. the MI5? Of course I would be, but I don't right. think he's saying Well, why would right. he hold a document that says that he's signed? You'll have to ask John McDonald, but I can oh. say with confidence John McDonald does not want to disband MI5. So why would you right. hold why would you that up it? and flourish it? You must ask him. You know, very often, as a public figure... Well, we can ask him because he's not on the programme. You're the closest we can get to him. You are his presence on earth as you are Mr Corbyn's. <laughs> Why would you pack then your name to a document like that and then flourish it and then have your office say, I've never even seen it? What I can tell you is he's not calling for the disbanding of MI5. But you shouldn't sign letters you don't, if you don't believe in the demands. I mean, does well, he believe in all the other demands? Personally, having been caught out like this years ago, I never sign mm. anything unless I've read it properly. That's my rule. But right, but he's the Shadow Chancellor, and so he has signed something calling for this. I mean, Labour he MP signed Gavin... it back in April before he was Shadow Chancellor, if right. he signed but it. but he is now. So it was all right to be against MI5 in April, but not now. I isn't against MI5, Andrew. Is it? Do you think you should come out and clarify that and say, I am not against, dis oh, I'm for MI5, I do not want to disband them, <laughs> um, or special police squads, or disarm the police at a time when we've just had I'm a sure major... I'm sure he'll be clarifying it in very shortly. Because it's obviously, given what's happened in Paris, you don't want that misapprehension out there. Right. Do you think he did believe it bef back in April? No, I don't, actually. Right. So it's not a, a case of changing his mind? No, I don't think so. Right. Well, let's go on to some of the other things that Mike Gates was saying. He said he's going to vote for airstrikes even if there is no UN resolution. That will put him at odds, obviously, with uh, Jeremy Corbyn and, and you on the case of airstrikes. Are you relaxed about him rebelling? It puts him at odds, actually, with party policy. We discussed this at a party conference, which is not so long ago. And the resolution we passed said that we wouldn't support bombing unless, first of all, there was a UN resolution, but we appreciate that it might be vetoed. Well, but more I mean, it's important, likely to be vetoed, isn't it, But Barisha? more important, there was a comprehensive policy in relation to resettling any refugees that were created as a result of the bombing and a comprehensive policy to bring about peace in Syria. And I think for Mike Gapes to say he's going to vote with a Tory resolution when he's not seen any such comprehensive policy and he's not seen the resolution... <laughs> is a little premature. Really? Well, he, he says he's going to vote with his conscience. He says he is voting for his country. I know about voting for your conscience, but he's not seen the resolution. Right. I mean, but he uses the example that people like you um, and Jeremy Corbyn and John McDonnell have rebelled, you know, under previous Labour governments. Then what's wrong with him doing it? I certainly rebelled. In particular, I rebelled on the Iraq war. But, you know, I rebelled once I'd seen the resolution on the order paper. And Mike Gapes ought to stop and wait and see what Cameron's actually saying. Because you think he'll change his mind? I don't know. It just seems sensible for a Member of Parliament to vote according to the text on the order paper. What about... I mean, there are talk that probably 15 or so Labour MPs will do the same. They will uh, defy the leadership, they'll defy party policy, as you put it, and vote with the government for airstrikes. Well, they will be defying party policy. I said it was only passed a few months ago. They will have to explain it um, to party members, but in the end, of course, they must vote with their conscience. Right. Ken Livingston says people can rebel if they feel strongly uh, about these things. Do you feel equally relaxed with Ken Livingston? Because he said he did it enough times. I just said, 
in the end, people must vote with their conscience. I mean, there seems to be a party within a party developing in Labour. If you've got MPs here, as you say, even before they've seen the proposal, they're saying they're going to uh, vote against the party leadership. You had MPs standing up in the House of Commons um, over the last few days, openly defying Jeremy Corbyn on his views on surveillance powers, um, on shoot to kill. Um, and it, it, it seems that there is a different sort of party growing within the official Labour Party. You know what, once you leave the Westminster bubble and you go almost anywhere outside the M25, people are still willing to give Jeremy a chance. People want him to be treated fairly. And some of the things we get worked up about because of the churn of social media and 24-hour news, and, and the, the passing over Labour supporters have. Right, what do you say to John Mann then, very briefly? He says he, he believes in Hillary Benn leading uh, the Labour Party on defence and foreign affairs. Is Hillary Benn leading the Labour Party? No, but he's our foreign affairs spokesperson. But in the end, Jeremy Corbyn leads the Labour Party and he has the biggest mandate of any Labour leader right, since the war. Thank you, Diane. I've been getting away with it all.